Well, yeah, hopefully uh, if we get it all right, the, the sculpture will, will pretty much look like that. That's the original maquette that we made uh, before starting the big one. Um, we took it from that stage, we did all the measurements and the calculations, had to be wind tested, etc. All the engineering work was done from this little model. Uh, from there we took it into, we made a, a large plaster model of it, basically a life-size plaster model. And that's what they're casting the, uh, the bronze from. Can you explain to us how you had the idea, how, you, how long you've been working on the cow series and where the idea for the cow series came from? Um, the original idea I had, I, I just drew a little drawing of a cow up a tree in my sketchbook. and At first I didn't quite understand what it was about, but uh, then I realised that uh, it's a sort of quintessential flood image in Australia. It's often you get animals caught up trees. Um, this, this one uh, came about through me imagining on uh, Dobell's airfield what would happen if there was a flood and, and, and I imagined that these paper mache cows would float around and that uh, obviously they'd maybe one or two of them end up in a tree. Who was Dobell? Uh, William Dobell, famous Australian portrait painter, um, won the 1943 Archibald Prize with the painting of Joshua Smith. Uh, that prize was challenged on the basis that the painting was not a portrait but a caricature. And uh, I've used that idea of Dobell's portrait of Joshua Smith and I've based the cow in the jonnet. So the cow has a sort of pin head with a long neck, very elongated. So um, it, I actually don't think my cows actually look much like cows when you see a real cow, but uh, when you see Joshua Smith, you kind of understand. But, Are you a big cow fan? Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the cows don't interest me that much. It was more the idea of this artist being put to work as a camouflage labourer and, and that he was doing this crazy idea of making paper mache cows, uh, sorry, paper mache cows to put out on grass air fields. Um, it was more the, the, the absurdity of the, uh, the whole idea that, that, that attracted me. And the, the, the cow's getting the spotlight, but actually you do a lot of work on the tree as well. Well, the tree was the most difficult thing to make in the sculpture and uh, the way I did it, I, I travelled back to Australia and I went to a, a town in central Victoria called Benalla and it was there that I found uh, these very strange but very Australian trees, uh, the salmon gum. And uh, they're, they're really quite special because uh, if you look at them, they, the, 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 the tree has human characteristics uh, such as wrinkly skin and sort of like almost elbows and, and in some ways they can almost be quite sexual but uh, it, it was very difficult to make this tree because uh, starting from scratch I've never made a tree before so uh, I didn't quite know how to go about it but uh, I think we managed to, uh, to get it reasonably right. here working in France? Um, well, it's been fantastic working with the, the people from Coubertin, um, just the, the skills they have, the sense of history the whole place has. Um, it's been great sort of like making my sculpture under such a, a famous Rodin uh, as the gates of hell, uh, with his thinker sort of looking down on me. And what kind of reception have you been getting from the people here? 
Uh, from the workers, uh, great. Like, uh, I, th I think they appreciated the fact that it, you know, got my hands dirty and got in and uh, you know, made the work. It was very difficult work to make. Um, spent six weeks up on scaffolding, uh, making a huge plaster. It wasn't easy, but uh, they were fantastic assistance and, and expertise that they provided you know, made it possible. Your, your, your cow sticks out here, though. It's different from all the other things. Huh? Have they been joking, teasing you about your cow? I, I think, um, I guess uh, not a lot of contemporary art uh, is made in bronze these days. It's sort of, uh, it's, it's kind of considered a very traditional, old-fashioned sort of way of making a sculpture. And I, and I think the people here have really appreciated that a contemporary artist is coming in and sort of making a, uh, a you know, a sculpture, a new sculpture, whereas a lot of the work they do here is, is work that was maybe made 100 years ago by Rodin or, or you know, there's Leger and uh, other artists like that with, who are obviously, you know, um, not around anymore. So to have a, a young artist here, I think, is, uh, is being quite refreshing for, for them. Uh, yeah, a lot of contemporary artists probably wouldn't consider using bronze uh, for their artworks these days, but just with this sculpture, just the structural requirements of putting a, a cow up a tree, which has proved to be the, the, the best medium to use. Is that strange for you that that's your cow? Uh, no, it's fantastic. It's really part of the process and it's probably the most important thing, you know, is, is the whole building building of the sculpture, the, 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 all this process, which is hundreds of years old. You know. And how did you end up involved in this project? Uh, basically, I received an invitation from the city of Paris. That came about by a fair amount of luck, where I'd, I'd produced some uh, photo montages of uh, my sculpture uh, in certain different sites. Um, I, I created these on a computer and. And I gave them to my French dealer, who, who just happened to uh, show the city of Paris. Um, and they seemed to think that it would work with this exhibition. So that's how the, the invitation came. And your wife has been very supportive. Uh, yeah, when I, uh, when I came to her and said that I wanted to make an eight metre high bronze sculpture, uh, she, uh, she didn't think twice about committing to it uh, financially. And uh, she, she was prepared to sell her flat that she owned. And, uh, and she's been supporting me. Uh, financially at different times that uh, you know when the money's been tight so it's it's been she's been really fantastic and and how how are you financing this uh, it's, it's pretty much self-funded we had uh, we have some assistance from the Australia France Foundation um, the RMIT University have been terrific uh, the three galleries that I'm associated with uh, Niagara galleries in Melbourne uh, the Piccadilly gallery in London and Arts D Australia in Paris have all contributed in different ways uh, to making this sculpture. But it's pretty much, uh, I've had to beg, borrow, not quite steal, but uh, I think if I had to, I would. Why? What's, what's, what are you trying to say with this cow? Um, well, the, the, the sculpture sort of like evolved just naturally through my work. I, I don't think there's any, uh, I don't think there's a statement into it in the actual sculpture. I think what, well, no, hang on. The, the sculpture is a statement, but uh, I think the way people read it is, depends on their background and where they're coming from. Um, often the French, you know, like if a French person sees it, sees it as quite an absurd image, whereas possibly uh, Australians tend to relate to it more as a, a flood image. But you must be sensitive somewhere. You're, you're sitting on the cow's neck. You spent a lot of time with the cow. The cow is cute. How, how do you feel about, about this cow? Um, Does it have a name? No. It's, uh, I don't know, because I'm so close to my work, it's, it's like uh, I have a completely different relationship to it to anybody else. It's sort of, uh, it's sort of so part of me and it, uh, sometimes maybe I can't see it.
could use a good pun like I can't see the wood for the trees, but uh, it, it, it's, it's something that, uh, that uh, it's been a, a great uh, experience making it from, you know, visualising it in a sketchbook this big to, to finally making it, you know, so large and putting it on such a, a great venue that uh, it's almost like too good to be true in some way. Could you talk again about the comic tragic aspect of the cow? Uh, I mean, it, it's got the Larry Larson side to it, and at the same time, it's um, actually representative of, of Second World War and the Flood. It's got. Well, I, th I think the image, the, the work I've done with the, the camouflage cows is that they're, they, they're, they have multi layers of meaning. and. Uh, it, it can be a comic image, it can be uh, absurd, but it can also be tragic. If, if, any, if you've experienced the flood, and uh, you know, I, th I think you would see it quite differently as if, if, if you've never had. Um, I think that uh, I think art should should have that multi uh, multi meanings. That uh, there's no one specific meaning. What are you going to say to critics if they don't like this? Well, if, if critics don't like my work, well, uh, this, this sculpture will still be around uh, when they're well and truly dead and buried. They need to pour it quite swiftly so it doesn't cool down. Because if, if there's any blockages, the whole pour will be wasted. Okay. Okay, and that's, that's how you pull bronze. <laughs>